And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Sunday, January the 30th, 2022. As the Globex session gets started here today, within the first five minutes, the NASDAQ had a uh, $71 range created in the first five minutes. And you can see the, the market reopened at uh, 14,450. Ran real quick in about three trades up to 14,473. Started to come back down. The sellers moved in, knocked it all the way down to 14,403. And now it's trading back up and we're now trying to find even ground where value is going to be, where buyers and sellers can come in and trade. This is presenting a very interesting picture for us, particularly after Friday's uh, pretty strong close. And I'm sure that quite a few went out uh, with positions that were indicating that we should open higher tomorrow morning here in the US. Now, on Friday, we had a weekly expiration but on Thursday afternoon slash evening, we had Apple's earnings. Now, Apple did not present bad earnings by any means. And even the forward guidance, I think, was pretty steady and congruent with expectations of what Apple should be doing for the balance of uh, this year, for the first half of this year. And, but they didn't blow the doors off of those earnings. They were good. Make no mistakes. They beat expectations. On iPhone sales, they beat expectation. On Mac sales, they beat expectations all the way around. So Apple initially was trading up about between four and six dollars, which I guess most people felt it was a good area, a good value area, according to earnings and how things should move forward. But then also tied into that coming into Friday was an expiration. And there were a lot, there were a lot of options between 162 and a half and 170. And for right up until 10 minutes before that close, it seemed pretty apparent that it was going to close between 165 and 167. And then it just exploded upwards, got above 170, pulled the entire index up along with the Dow, along with the S&P and along with the Russell. And it came, became very, very interesting because it produced, let me see, I'll blow this up even more so we can get a good look at it. That's what it did. Now, granted, this is at, at, at three o'clock, that's when this bar, three, three o'clock to four o'clock. So that's to the close. But it essentially was trading probably 43.30. And then it just exploded and got up to 40, excuse me, come on, Mark, up to 14,433, which was the regular close. That was very, very interesting. So <laughs> the market zoomed 100 points in 10 minutes. It was a very interesting close nonetheless. Now, what can we say? I continue to leave at last week's highs, last week Wednesday's high at 14,639.75. That is, in my estimation, still is the completion point for minute wave four, for that correction, we had a beautiful A, B, C correction. And I had discussed last Thursday on the update that we run the possibility that the market is now putting in a more complex fourth wave, which is not uncommon, particularly in the position we we're in, that we're looking to finish a a, a five-wave sequence down, but the market is kind of indecisive. And that may have been because we had earnings coming on Thursday. 
major earnings report from Apple. So, but this could be the following. It could be a next wave, and this could be wave A, this could be wave B, and we're in a C wave up. If that's the case, I would think we, we I can count five up. And so it could be done right here at the Globex high at 14,475, unless they break that high, which of course they can, but five waves up completes the C wave. So what else could it possibly be? Yes, I can probably put in, in fact, I'll do it right now, just to cover if we're still looking at, we're going to get some additional upside. Uh, come on. Why won't you do that? So let me just reactivate this, see if I can get it to work now. There we go. I'm just going to put some extensions in, which would cover this C wave. So, We've already surpassed where wave C is equal to wave A. That's why it looks so flat as of right now. But if we still have more room to go, well, we have next resistance at 14,538, then 14,620 to 39, 639. And then the 1618 is up here at 14,755, we'll call it. Now that's very possible. I cannot rule that out. So we're going to leave that in as an upside move that is still out there and could still possibly occur. Don't forget, we still have the Asian markets that got to come online. Then we have the European markets to come online. And then all before we get back in tomorrow morning on our US opening. So let's just kind of talk through this. That is one scenario. That would be the upside scenario. Now. We still have, uh, it's now faltering here, right around which could be support. But if the market holds this and continues to move up, you know, as they continue to sell it right now, um, then we're looking for, for resistance at 14,538. We have the 200 moving average, the hourly 200 moving average at 14,557. That will provide some resistance. Now, if it gets up and it breaks through there, it should begin to accelerate to the upside because it's going to provide that support to draw in another round of strong buying. That then may be enough to get it between next resistance at 14,620 and 14,755. I would expect out of this particular run that that resistance zone should hold and then this four would get moved over. And we'd have to go back out and let's take a look at that uh, four hour chart to see where the no break zone would be for this particular decline. And that sits all the way up at 15,152. So this fourth wave could be still be a fourth wave even if it got up to this line, which is now barely visible. Uh, and on the four hour chart, it would have to break also the 50, the four hour 50 moving average, which is at 14,530. So right now we're now starting to see these markets get hit. The NASDAQ is now down 55, the Dow futures down 84, 89. Now it's now only down 90. So the market's gonna be much more volatile down here because there's they're trading on two to three point differences between bid and offer, and they trade on it. And that's just the nature of Globex um, at this hour. Now, so that covers us on upside. We have our no break zone, which is you know, 15,152, come on. And now I'm gonna take it back down to the hourly chart and let's discuss the next possibility. So once again, I'm going to open it up so we can see it. I am now going to remove that upside uh, extensions, the Fibonacci extensions. And let's now take a look at what our possibilities are coming off. Let's say that this is the completion point for the minute four, which I still have labeled right there. This, I presented this also last week, is wave one of five. 
A, B, C, wave two of five. It fits, it didn't break any rules. Uh, second waves can retrace almost all of wave one, kind of fits. You now we got within 90 points of breaking above there, so maybe even less. But yeah, that's 40 plus 25, we got within 65 points of getting up and breaking above there, in which case then it would not be a wave two. So we gave the upside scenario. Here's our downside scenario. If the selling does continue and we do not break above 14,640, then we're likely going to be one, two, and we're beginning to drop in wave three of five. Now, what would we expect? What would I expect to see the market do if indeed we're dropping in a third wave? Again, I'm going to review. Third waves under Elliott guidelines, third waves are most often the longest and the strongest of the impulse move. Impulse move being five waves. So out of waves one, three, and five, the third is normally the longest and the strongest. That would suggest we don't pause, we don't stop. Now, again, this is just the beginning of our Globex session. And within the first 20 minutes, we've, also, we've already uh, traveled almost 100 points. The low right now is 77. The high was 75. So we've almost traveled 100 points in 20 minutes. So if the selling does continue, I would expect it to begin to accelerate. That may take some time, but we're gonna, uh, touchy, touchy. We're going to break the four. This is the hourly four. Then we probably won't see much acceleration until we start breaking below the hourly eight. Then we have the 20 at 14,193. We've got the 50 at 14,178. If it breaks there, I am looking for acceleration. I'm looking for it to pick up the speed. Uh, if they do it with before uh, the, uh, the Asian market's open, same result. If they wait till the Asian market was open, same results. If it happens during Europe, same results. So if we sit in a range between now when Europe gets online, it's not going to change any factors. If the market rallies back up, it has to break above 14,475 to re-engage that upside count. And right now it really should not break below 14,102. Does that's kind of gonna negate the upside. That's just my estimation right now. I'd have to really dig and find some other uh, support to prevent it or, or would, which would signal that the downside is back on and upside's done. Um, so anyway, Downside, I'd be looking for acceleration. I'd be looking for it to break 14,096. I'd be looking for it to come down and break 13,759. Eventually in a third wave, I would be looking for it to likely break below 13,706. And I'm not saying that it's all gonna happen tomorrow, but you know, as I continually say, stranger things have taken place during our markets. The Dow was up 565 points. The cash market, 565 on Friday. The cash NASDAQ was up 451 points. In a bear market rally, although they're not considering the bear market, but in a corrective advance, counter trend. But this caught a lot of people. These moves just flip people's minds about the markets turning bullish. But I, I don't challenge them, but I just encourage people to try not to draw on like, why are they buying? Why is it bullish? But if you can't connect anything other than Apple's good earnings and Microsoft's okay earnings and good positive forward guidance to attach what's going to bring all of the markets back up 
and again, just keep pushing it higher, then you need to reconsider how you want to trade this. So downside scenario is pretty clear, as is the upside. So now we wait and we see what the market wants and chooses in terms of direction. I encourage people to continue to trade smart. Trade the price action, trade what's in front of us. I'm giving you analysis based on an hourly chart. Now, if we continue to just, if I move it down, I'm gonna get the same picture. And it's, you know, it, it continues to tell us, but when we start to see on a 30 minute chart, the 200 moving average is at 14,266. Same scenario. Now, right now, the eight and the four have pushed back above the 30 minute 200. The 20 is not that far behind. The 50, yeah, it's about 100 points. Those would have to move above this 200 to give support and a push to any upside move. They haven't done it. They could easily just turn around. So if they continue to sell, they'll stop going here and they'll start to go sideways. Right now, not looking that bad. And again, as we continue to go down, even if I go on a five minute chart, it doesn't look that bad. In fact, the five minute chart was all pretty well looking like, sure, we're gonna go up because you can see it was all lined up. The 200's on the bottom, the 50's above the 200, the 20's above the 50, the four and the eight were above the 20. But now look what's happening. Just out of that selling that we've seen, now actually do drop that so that it's officially down, was down 100 off of that high. And what do we have going on? They've broken the four and the eight. The eight has now turned lower. The four is heading towards that 20. The 20 has been broken, but now it's trading right at it. The 20 sits at 14,386 because this where it's trading is right on it. So about 84, 86, that's where it's sitting. So it's waffling right above and below, above and below, above and below. If it breaks below, look again. And this is not a five minute chart, but I'd start to look for acceleration. Now you're giving more impetus to sellers to come on in and sell. We're breaking levels that should provide support for buyers to return. It's not. So I'd be looking for it to break. Then we got that. So everything's now starting to line up and lean a little bit towards that uh, downside move. Back at the hourly chart, that's where we're gonna see the confirmation for these moves, All right? So again, upside, we'd be looking for this 14,556. That's where the 200 sits. I'm looking for that. We have resistance right under it, then we have resistance right above it. So it's gonna be an interesting day. Right now, my guess is we're lining up for a downside move. I, and I'm not a, a continuation of the downside move in a minute fifth wave decline. Now, I want to now put back, what do we have? Again, let's take a peek. Here are our support levels coming off. If this third wave, again, I'm looking for sure that it should be breaking below um, 13,844, but it needs to break below that 200, and not the 200, wave three, which was at 13,706, so right in between there. So what's our next underneath that? 13,682, 13,488, 618, where wave five would be equal to 0.618 of wave three is at 13,216. That continues to be a likely completion point or area for completion of this minute wave five, which in turn will be completing a minor wave C, which in turn, if it holds that level and starts to turn higher, would complete the intermediate fourth wave. Then yeah, guys, come on in, rally ahead. But I basically don't necessarily see it right now. Now, again, we're trading with wider markets right now. And when they wanna come in and buy it, 
it, they can push it very easily, as easily as the sellers can as it's coming off. Because that same wide market will exist. You hit bids, they're not going to necessarily lower their offer. Just like you, 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 you go up and you take offers, they're not necessarily going to lower or raise their bid. But they are still are going to try to push it back above 14,400, which is where they are right now. So the rallies aren't bad, but it's just, in my opinion, it, it seems that we may have already done. I'm looking at my one minute chart and I'm looking at my five minute chart. Looks like we're getting done on an initial five waves off of that 14,475 high. If that's the case, this is just a, a bounce higher and then we're gonna get another leg down. We'll see. But we were down 80, now we're down 23 and this is again in nine minutes. So it's still moving fast, it's still very volatile. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. We have our downside. Do I expect all of this tomorrow? No, but, but I want to say it can happen. There's nothing preventing this market from just giving up the ghost and just getting out. Everybody decides to get out. Now again, tomorrow being the 31st, um, let me see what we got. We have AMD uh, is reporting on the 1st of February, which is Tuesday. We have Amazon reporting on the 3rd, which is Thursday. We have Facebook on Wednesday, Google on Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have Google, Facebook, AMD, and Amazon. NVIDIA comes in mid-month. PayPal comes in on Tuesday. So we have, we have some players left and we have Self Adobe. We still have some bigger players to come out and put their earnings in there. And we'll see, we'll see what the markets do. We've got our upside scenario. We've got our downside scenario. Trade what's in front of you, trade smart, use the moving averages, use the Fibonacci, both directions, we have it. Use it wisely. Our next update will be Monday the 31st.